This training video is intended for caregivers such as teachers, school staff, daycare workers, relatives, babysitters, sports coaches, and extracurricular activity staff members who will be caring for or supervising a child who has a form of adrenal insufficiency. This video will provide some basic information about the condition, signs and symptoms when a patient may need additional medical intervention, and training regarding the proper way to respond in the rare event of an adrenal crisis. Disclaimer, this video was created by a non-medical professional with input and collaboration from endocrinologists and nonprofit advocacy organizations. All information should be reviewed and approved by the patient's endocrinologist prior to using this video for any training purposes. Some people have a life-threatening endocrine condition called adrenal insufficiency. This term refers to any medical condition when a person is unable to produce enough of the essential hormone cortisol. Some forms of adrenal insufficiency are also unable to produce enough of the essential hormone aldosterone. There are many types of adrenal insufficiency, including genetic forms like congenital adrenal hyperplasia, or CAH, autoimmune, like Addison's disease, and many other forms that are the result of other medical conditions that have impaired a person's ability to produce cortisol. Some of the treatment methods and protocols vary depending on the form of adrenal insufficiency. Please refer to the documentation provided by the child's endocrinologist to tailor a plan specific to the child's needs. Cortisol is the body's primary stress hormone and regulates a variety of important body functions, including regulating glucose, blood pressure, insulin, and heart rate. Aldosterone is the hormone that helps to regulate blood pressure, sodium, and potassium. Without replacing this hormone, the body retains too much potassium and loses or wastes too much sodium. AI patients are dependent on glucocorticoid medications daily to live. Growing children usually take hydrocortisone to replace cortisol and fludrocortisone to replace aldosterone. They also carry an emergency kit that includes an actovial of solucortef, which is an injectable form of hydrocortisone. Treatment needs can be divided into three main categories, normal day dosing, stress dosing, and an emergency or adrenal crisis situation. Those of us who don't have adrenal insufficiency produce significantly more cortisol when we are sick or injured. An AI patient needs this cortisol boost replicated using more hydrocortisone to enable their body to respond appropriately to the stressor. Let's review the signs, symptoms, and necessary responses for each scenario. If you weren't receiving this training, it is likely you would never notice anything different about the child at all. Most days, the child's standard daily maintenance dose is sufficient to keep the patient healthy and able to participate in all normal childhood activities. A child may need to take one or more of their daily medication doses while under your care. The family will provide the dosage amount and schedule for you to follow. In times of illness or injury, the body requires significantly more medication to respond to the stressor. This scenario is called stress dosing. An AI patient is usually given double or triple their normal dose of hydrocortisone immediately once symptoms are noticed. Each patient's stress dosing protocols vary, so refer to the documentation provided by the endocrinologist to review the patient's specific stress dosing protocol. It is important to note that giving a child a little too much hydrocortisone occasionally should not harm the patient, but giving too little could lead to symptoms escalating. The family will be able to inform you regarding the child's most common triggers and symptoms that warrant extra medication. In times of severe illness or injury, the patient may require an emergency injection of hydrocortisone. These scenarios are rare. Most often, if an AI patient were to experience an emergency while in your care, you likely would have already noticed some symptoms and contacted the child's family. The child's guardians would manage any further symptom escalation. However, because some emergencies can arise swiftly and many regions have inconsistent or unreliable emergency response from ambulances or hospital emergency rooms regarding re responding to an adrenal crisis, it is vital that any caretaker have at least a baseline understanding of the symptoms of an adrenal crisis 
and how to administer the emergency injection. The family will provide all necessary items, including documentation with clear instructions, inside the child's emergency kit. Caretakers should have this emergency kit available at all times, with all staff aware of where the kit is located and how to access it if it is kept in a locked container. The kit should be taken with a child on any field trips or excursions. In a rare emergency situation, when the patient may not be able to ingest oral medication or is vomiting repeatedly, an injection of solocortef will be needed to stabilize the patient. A patient experiencing a potentially life-threatening adrenal crisis may present with symptoms including nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, dizziness, pale skin, stomach aches or headaches, lethargy, confusion or delirium, low blood sugar, low blood pressure, fast heart rate, seizures, or shock-like symptoms. A patient may appear intoxicated. The treatment for any patient experiencing an adrenal crisis, regardless of the exact diagnosis, is to give an injection of solucortef. To give solucortef, follow the dosage guidelines provided by the child's endocrinologist. The following slides will very quickly review the steps to give the solucortef injection. It is recommended to do an injection training using expired actovials, syringes, alcohol prep pads, and an orange, so all participants can handle the materials and gain confidence in the injection process. To give the solocortef injection, first check the expiration date, then push the entire top of the vial down hard to release the stopper inside the actovial. Mix the powder and solution. Do not shake, just gently swirl the vial until the medication is mixed completely. Check the patient's dose. Remove the small plastic tab at the top of the vial. Clean the top of the vial with an alcohol prep pad. Open the syringe and draw air into the syringe equal to the level of the patient's dose. Insert the needle into the vial, invert the vial, inject the air, and pull back the plunger until you have the correct dose in the syringe. Remove the needle from the vial, then remove any air bubbles from the syringe. Identify the injection site on the middle outer portion of the patient's thigh, then wipe the skin with an alcohol prep pad. Finally, jab the needle into the patient's thigh and inject the solucortef. After giving the injection, the patient may improve drastically within about 10 minutes, but they still require monitoring and should be transported to the nearest hospital. Depending on the cause of the crisis, other aid may be needed. The patient's adrenal crisis symptoms should be treated with urgency when prioritizing what aid to administer, and the solocortef injection should be administered prior to being transported to the hospital whenever possible. If a caretaker has given the injection prior to first responders arrival, pass along any medical supplies, including the used actovial of solocortef and any documentation related to the child's medical care to the ambulance staff. This will aid in the transition of care to the hospital. This is a lot of information and may feel overwhelming, but your main role as a caregiver is to be aware and attentive to the signs and symptoms that may warrant a medical response. Ask the family questions or to repeat information until you feel confident in the response protocols. And whenever in doubt, the best course of action is to overreact. This may mean simply contacting the family to communicate any symptoms you've noticed and allow them to make the decisions about what should happen next. Thank you for taking a few minutes to learn about adrenal insufficiency and what the child in your care needs to remain safe and healthy.